let's move on to the other um, uh, race that was settled, and it involved individual players, the Capo Cananieri. Um, Ronaldo does not score against Cagliari, although he went out of his way to try, and Alessio Crania went out of his way to make sure he didn't. Um, <laughs> and uh, you had uh, Chiro Immobile, of course, you know, who scored at midweek to make it, put him on 35, put Ronaldo on 31. Juve makes the decision, and I think, you know, they did this with Ronaldo's blessing, obviously, that um, it was not important for him to play against Roma to try to score five goals and to try to burn himself out when there's a big Champions League game coming up against Lyon. So, Chiro Immobile is Capo Cananieri, 36 goals. I'm doing victory laps on that. I'm doing victory laps on saying Pioli was going to be a great manager for Milan. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm too fat to be doing all these victory laps. I'm actually really tired. I'm glad the season is over. But anyway, um, Chiro Immobile ties Gonzalo Higuain's record. Um, Matt, uh, 36 for Immobile, 36 for Higuain. Who did it better? I'm going to say it's it's Napoli, uh, not Napoli, because I'll be going from sure. Napoli. And the reason why I say that is because obviously there's the discrepancy or the, the, the difference in, in penalties, right? I think, you know, 36 goals, only three of them I recall are penalties. And that's, I mean, that's a lot. You know, that's a lot. That's 33 goals from open play. I know that Napoli side he was uh, involved with Maurizio. Sorry, they had a ton of players in that squad that were very good. But it was kind of the perfect fit for him. And I know Lazio, they had just a breakout here. Now, I know... With Amole, he's done this before. He's proven he could be a, a, a guy, a goal scorer who can score. And, and by the bulk, he did it. Torino, he did it. Um, you know, but Lazio, a couple, you know, many, many years. He's, I think, they're approaching their all-time leading scorer. I believe he maybe even is their leading scorer, um, or is approaching that right soon. So it, it's for me. I think you know, no one's diminishing what Immobile accomplished. Uh, a sensational feat, and I think what maybe will give him more uh, credibility and more. Uh, people leaning in his his camp is the fact that he outscored everyone. He got the golden boot across the board. You know, it was he you know, surpassed Lewandowski. He surpassed Ronaldo. He surpassed Messi. When you do those sorts of things, I don't care if you do 12 penalties, 50 penalties, 20 penalties, that's going to stand out quite a bit. And I think ultimately, the one thing that would have maybe solidified his status on the world stage would have been his, you know, performance at, at the, the now- you know, canceled Euro. I think that would have been something that can really solidify his status. But as far as the seasons go, I'm going to go with Iguain, but I think there's nothing you could take away from Immobile. He's been fantastic. Bob Black says, Frank, what's the lottery numbers if you're that good at predicting? If if I knew the lottery numbers, I wouldn't be doing this. Okay. I promise you. <laughs> so um, I guess it only relates to certain Calcio uh, takes. So uh, Martino, who did it better? Iguain. Um, look, also, I, I think it's just the way the league was working this year, too. The Juve allowed 43 goals. That is the second mm. highest all time for a Serie A Scudetto winner. Um, I think that just tells you where the league's at right now. I think overall, it's not as strong as it was a few years ago, and certainly not as strong as it was, you know, back when even Luca Toni was doing it, right? Uh, getting over 30. Um, and, and we talked about the statistic that pops up all the time. How many guys is a very small amount of guys who have scored over 30 goals in the league's history since like 1960, right? We had two this year and they, and it was inflated by penalties and it's no disrespect. You still have to score those penalties at the end of the day. I'm happy you look like a genius because you picked Immobile over it. Um, but at the end of the day, to me, it's just, if anyone's played, you know how difficult it is to just score in open play. And in that league, and, you know, for me, it's just Higuain. And there's no disrespect to Immobile. And to Matt's point, like, outscoring all those guys, too. I mean, kudos to you. You still have to score at the end of the day, and he stepped up. Just do it next summer, please. That's all I care about. That Please, just do it then. I also think with – I just want to add real quick. I also think with Immobile, it's another fascinating thing, too, is that he had nine assists, like – that's a lot for a striker too. You know, mm-hmm. I think if you look down the board of the strikers who were kind of neck and neck with him, I know Ronaldo maybe had a handful of assists, some of different variety, but in terms of goal contribution, like Immobile had a, a fantastic year and he's going to have one for the record books for sure. Obviously all the Ronaldo fanboys are going to look to Ronaldo because, <laughs> sure. you know, it's, he's Ronaldo, but and I think that maybe can take away some of his, his spot. You know, when we look back on this year, but at the same time, because again, Ronaldo, they has 30 something goals. He's got the, he was the only player to do it, I think, in the top, you know, La Liga, Premier League, and Serie A. So he's got all these sorts of stats and facts to back him up. But 
again, two fantastic seasons. And I'm, and I'm glad that, you know, these sorts of seasons are coming out from these sorts of players because then it's kind of changing the, the unfair stereotype that maybe outsiders of Calcio have of Serie A being defensive, boring, not enough goals. And as you can tell, it was one of the biggest, you know, and most potent goal scoring seasons um, in, in recent memory, especially with, of course, Atalanta as well. Sure. Um, I'm going to just play devil's advocate a little bit here. Um, I mean, I, I, I have no problem with you saying Higuain. I'm, I'm not going to fight anybody that's going to say Higuain's is more impressive. You know, it took a hat trick against Frozenone on the last day, uh, you know, to get to that 36 number. The next highest scorer that season was Paulo Dybala at 19. Okay, so Chiro Immobile had to, had to achieve this mark with Cristiano Ronaldo breathing down his neck, you know, at 31. That's not, you know, we're talking about, you know, one of the best players of the last 20 years, uh, you know, and certainly you know, someone that's going to eat at the table among the greatest to ever play this game. Um, so that's where I would want to say that, you know, okay, penalties, they're part of the game. They're going to happen. Um, you know, and did Immobile have an abundance of penalties? Yes. Did Ronaldo have an abundance of penalties? Yes. But, you know, Iguain didn't really have a challenger, uh, you know, when he stepped in and got his 36. Uh, Immobile had Ronaldo chasing him down, uh, you know, and at one point, you know, for 30 minutes, Ronaldo pulled ahead of him, uh, you know, in the same game. So, um, you know, so to be able to do that and, and, and for me, it just made sense to pick Immobile at the beginning of the season because you're talking about a Lazio team that added Manuel Atsadi on the right wing, which was probably the most perfect fit for a transfer uh, that you could have asked for when you're taking a look at how this all, how it all panned out or how the summer was going. Sergei Milinkovic Savic and Luis Alberto weren't going to suck two seasons in a row, um, you know, and then they had contributions from other positions. So we, f I felt like Lazio was going to be a, a, a high scoring team this season and who's going to benefit but Chiro Immobile because we've seen him do it before. I, 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 I struggle with trying to decide who did it better. I, I, you know, I'm going to just say Immobile and just, just to be different from what you guys said, and I've got no problem with what you guys said at all, mm -hmm. but I'm only saying it because CR7 was right there and was breathing down his neck the whole time, uh, especially when this season restarted. So, do you do you think that helped him though? So, like when your competition brings out the best in people, right? And I think that's something that is always kind of said. So, like if they're pushing each other, kind of like Messi and Cristiano did for much of their primes, they were just reaching new heights that way. Do you think that kind of impacted this race? Like if Cristiano wasn't there, do we think he mobile gets the thirty six? Is he pushing for it? Because you could see sometimes in some of these games, he's he was gunning for that record and he wanted it and I'm not taking away from him. I'm just saying like, I'm like genuinely asking, I think it might've been a factor. In it. Um, I think that there is some truth to that for sure. Because I think whenever, we, whenever we had, you know, Messi at Barcelona and, and Ronaldo at Real Madrid, and then they were playing, one was playing Tuesday, the other was playing Wednesday in the champions. league. it's all right. The guy on Wednesday can't wait to get out there because he wants to better what the guy did on Tuesday. Um, you know, so I definitely think that there's some truth to that. I think competition, you know, for a scoring title or anything else is definitely going to motivate you. So, you know, no, no problem with that take whatsoever. Uh, can we stop having Ronaldo take free kicks, please? He, he stopped, didn't he? <laughs> so a <laughs> good take. I like that. So, you know, I, I, I mildly edge Chudo Immobile for the, you know, for the reasons that I, that I, that I say. So. Um, but, I, you know, certainly not taking away from the season that Gonzalo Iguain had. Make it big.